Dear learners, I am Christina Georgi. I welcome you to my session on British literature early 20th century. This is a specialized session specifically designed for the BAEGH learners based on the course code BEGC 112. Hence, all the aspects discussed in this session will be solely based on or limited to the prescribed syllabus and study material for the same. In our previous session, we discussed an introduction to modernism which was basically unit 1 of block 1 of your official study material on BEGC 112. So today we will focus our attention towards modernism in poetry and here we will focus on the characteristics of modernism with reference to modernist poetry. We will study the differences between paleo-modernism and neo-modernism. We will also have a look into the relationship between modernism and tradition. A specific example of modernist poetry will be discussed which is none other than the wasteland that we studied or rather we just had an understanding of as part of unit 1. So to be precise this topic falls under unit 2 of block 1 of our official study material. So we already looked at what modernism is in art and literature. We studied that Modernism started in the last years of the 19th century and this movement reached its peak between 1910 and 1930 even if in the last few years of 19th century and we also saw who were those notable British writers of the modernist era. Notable figures such as T.S. Eliot, W.B. Yeats, Ezra Pound, we studied Ezra Pound's notion of make it new. James Joyce, Alice's and such works you must have heard of, Virginia Woolf, D.H. Lawrence, these two writers works we will be dealing with in detail and all these people have contributed immensely to modernist literature in English. Remember we also have the war poets belonging to the first world war period. Obviously their central theme was an anti-war position. Who were these writers? W. H. Auden, Wilfred Owen, Isaac Rosenberg, Siegfried Sassoon, Robert Graves. But the impact of Eliot and Yeats who started writing before the war and continued to write well after the war left a strong influence on English poetry. With respect to English poetry, two notable figures would be Eliot and Yes, undoubtedly. Now, we will focus our attention towards the characteristics of modernism with respect to the modern poetry. See, in casual sense, modern would mean that something is new. That means, we will casually say, uh, she or he is a modern person. It means that he or she does not wholly subscribe to traditional beliefs and traditional culture. He or she believed that all these traditional beliefs and cultures need not be followed and that something new should be followed. It also means that this person is daring and desires to be different from the accepted traditions and practices of this society. So modernism or the modern movement was built on this idea. Remember the make it new slogan who coined it? I told you in unit 1 that this phrase was coined by Ezra Pound. Ezra Pound was an American poet and critic. Remember that Pound is not a British writer. He was an American poet and critic. It was from his slogan that this idea was influenced. So T.S. Eliot's Wasteland, as we always mentioned, is a good example of where the most modernist writer has used the legend of the Holy Grail. It's a biblical allusion and the Fisher King and many literary and cultural allusions from the Western canon alongside quotations from Buddhism and the Hindu Upanishads. This is something that you need to keep in mind. 
Now, have you heard of this paleomodernism and neomodernism? Neomodernism would be much more familiar. So, what do you mean by paleomodernism? Any idea? Obviously, there wouldn't be much idea. So, there is this Frank Kermond who distinguished the two phases of modernism. According to Frank Kermond, paleomodernism and neomodernism are the two phases of modernism so this neo modernism is also known as post modernism so i was saying paleo modernism is nothing else but old or earlier modernism this very prefix or paleo as a term means old okay simply means old so who were the paleo modernist writers they include those who wrote till the 1930s such as T.S. Eliot, James Joyce, Marcel Proust, Ezra Pound, D.H. Lawrence, etc. So all those modernist writers who wrote after that, that is after the 1940s, were the neo-modernists. They include Gertrude Stein, William Carlos Williams, Wallace Stevens, Virginia Woolf. So it's always important to study at least a few names. Okay, at least a few names of writers. Now there is a table given in your study material as part of section 2.4. This table is important. If they ask you this question, you can certainly answer from this. The differences between paleomodernism and no modernism. There is one additional aspect. You should write the names of the writers. That is not specifically mentioned in the study material. But if they ask you for the examination, you should have to do that. Okay. So the old modernist writers, that is the paleomodernism, sought quality and perfection. Whereas the new modernists, that is the postmodernist writers, criticized quality and perfection. All value should be valued equally. That was their stance. Remember, this is the same answer that you should write if there comes a question to distinguish modernism and postmodernism. Keep that in mind. Hmm? Yeah. Now, paleomodernists wrote poems and books with Greek and Latin quotes, whereas the neo-modernists wrote short poems. The other main difference is that the paleomodernists were likely to be Christian. Hmm? So Christian themes were very prominent. Whereas the postmodernists or the neo-modernists were philosophically committed to individual and cultural relativism. Relativism was the cultural aspect. The theory, philosophical theory followed by them. So for the paleomodernists, words had to be understood in the context where they used to. Then for the postmodernists, words are used in the relative sense. Oh yes, much more modern in aspects. So this would be the point. For the paleomodernists, words are to be understood in the contexts where they are used. Whereas the postmodernists were much more progressive. They believed that words are used in the relative sense and presented in sentence fragments without the context by stripping off all unwidely association, fragmented structures. Okay, and the paleo modernists were much more closer to structuralism, whereas the post modernists were much more closer to deconstructionism. So, when you get time, make sure that you understand the differences, distinctions between paleo modernism and neo modernism. For your TEE, if they ask you to distinguish between modernism and post modernism, it's the same aspects you will have to write. Then again, provide an introduction and conclusion according to the marks. Anyway, there will be questions with a minimum of six marks. May that be any kind of question. There is also the significant relationship between modernism and tradition. 
what are these significant relationships the relationship is actually paradoxical there is a paradoxical relationship between modernism and tradition that is on one hand modernism seeks to liberate itself from inherited tradition of values ideas and cultural forms yes we studied that modernism was indeed a break away of traditions liberation from traditions of values ideals and cultural forms a complete break away from the past but at the same time there is a return to ancient myths from various cultures and religions with a deep sense of alienation loss and despair and this is evident in the wasteland hence we can see that modern imagination is both liberated and alienated therefore these modernist writers are in constant search of originality and they have gone back to ancient myths and traditions for reference this is the difference or this is the basic relationship between modernism and tradition modernist writers in search of originality have gone back to ancient myths and traditions what does that mean in their works they have referred to or quoted from the ancient traditions and myths that is the paradoxical relationship that they share now comes modernist poetry as such you can see the features of modernist poetry what is modernist poetry section 2.6 it is poetry that has broken away from the traditions of the past it is aggressively and consciously different from the poetry of the past all of modern poetry does not hang as one united movement but it is characterized by diversity a change in attitude towards poetic syntax is seen and symbolism is used in poetry when you study symbolism you will have to study t s eliot's aspect of objective correlator um it is a very meaningful theory which i teach as part of image 5 literary criticism and theory there are very many aspects involved in an objective correlator but for your study you just need to remember t s eliot's objective correlator i believe you should have studied this at some point in time during your ba journey i'm not very sure in which paper anyway we'll take this up seriously in our next session now let's focus our attention towards an example of modernist poetry whenever we think of modernist poetry it is undoubtedly the wasteland that comes to our mind so it is one of the most significant poems of the 20th century and a central work of modernist poetry dear learners i'm referring to the wasteland by t s eliot before we move on to the textual aspect let me give you an introduction to the wasteland you don't have to study this poem in detail nevertheless it is of great importance to have an idea so the wasteland caused a sensation when it was published when was it published the year of publication is quite relevant in the year 1922 so it is today undoubtedly the most widely translated and studied english language poem of the 20th century an interesting aspect to remember is that the wasteland is not quite the poem eliot originally drafted it is because of the contributions from estra pound a friend of t.s eliot he is also a well renowned poet of the 20th century so eliot's close friend and colleague estra pound significantly revised the poem suggesting major cuts and compressions remember if it was not edited by pound imagine the length of the poem the poem that we read today is of 434 lines remember this first appeared in the united kingdom in the october issue of eliot's the criterion and in the united states in the november issue of the dial both these are 
popular journals of the era magazines so it was published in book form in december 1922 along its famous phrases are april is the cruelest month i will show you fear in a handful of dust these fragments i have shored against my ruins and of course the sanskrit mantra shanti 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 so all those lines that are mentioned are very crucial with respect to your study on the wasteland these are significant parts or crucial lines from the wasteland another important aspect to remember is that this particular poem is divided into five sections remember five sections the first section is titled the burial of the dead section 2 is titled a game of chess section 3 is titled the fire sermon section 4 is titled death by water and the last and final section the fifth section is titled what the thunder said so the first section that is the burial of the dead introduces the diverse themes of disillusionment and despair in the poem now comes a game of chess this section employs alternating narrations in which Vignettes of several characters addresses those themes experimentally. If we look at the third section, that is the fire sermon, this section offers a philosophical meditation in relation to the imagery of death and also views of self-denial. The death by water, the fourth section, includes a brief lyrical petition, the culminating fifth session, which is titled. what the thunder said finally concludes with an image of judgment you don't have to go into the details as such nevertheless it is important to have an idea i understand that you must have find a minimum amount of difficulty in understanding these aspects modernist poetry is indeed difficult poetry since logical meaning has been replaced by images there is a tendency on the part of the poets especially in the modern era to focus on intensity rather than meaning to satisfy the reader hence it will be full of illusions and symbolism and other modernist features hence there will be difficulty from the part of the readers to read and understand these aspects so eliot's poem this particular poem wasteland in a way combines the legend of the holy grail and the fisher king he employs many allusions to the western canon such as ovid's metamorphoses it is a very seminal work by ovid dante's divine comedy must be familiar to you shakespeare milton and also buddhist sculptures the hindu upanishads and even a contemporary popular song the shakespearean rag so the poem shifts between voices of satire and prophecy featuring abrupt and unannounced changes of speaker location and time so all these could be considered as features of modernism f r lewis is a popular critic and writer of the 20th century he said that the poems A rich disorganization is an index of the modern plight the state of society in modern times he also says that the irrevocable loss of that sense of absoluteness that seems necessary to a robust culture so this is mentioned in your study material you can read more about that so our study material provides an example of a few lines So it says that in section two, a game of chess, the shifting style throws light on different women protagonists. Starting with Cleopatra's ornate lifestyle, the poem moves to Belinda. You know who Belinda is? She is none other than the heroine of the mock epic, the Rape of the Lock. So she lives in an idle, expensive world of makeup. 
dress and conspicuous consumption than to the unpleasant reality of modern times all these transitions and women protagonists are mentioned in section 2 similarly our text mentions section 3 the fire sermon one sees the change of class that is from the wealthy class to the lowly class and the way the women of different classes talk show the transitions of time and also transitions of the talk by the pub women followed by the typist who reveals his own superiority so all these are instances from the lines from all these sections okay so it is mentioned that the poem contrasts elizabethan magnificence with modern sordidness so you can read that in the section 2.7 as given in your study material remember this is a great poem with multifaceted layers of interpretations we are limiting our discussion with respect to the syllabus and the study material provided for your specific study purpose there is also a mention regarding eliot's last section what the thunder said it is said that it is inspired from the hindu faith in a dramatic moment in a dramatic moment actually thunder cracks over the scene and its noise seems to say three words in sanskrit datta dayatvam and damyata datta dayatvam and damyata which command you to give sympathize and control so this is followed by a repetition of the word shanti which means the peace that passes all understanding there is repetition of shanti thrice shanti 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 in short we can say that he sees himself standing in the middle of a wasteland that's littered with pieces from a glorious cultured past and in writing this poem eliot has collected these broken pieces and piled them up together in a sort of testimony which he feels is the most he can do now that western culture is shattered for such a depressing poem the waste land actually ends on a slight note of optimism hope pointing us towards non western religions as a way to restore our faith and also to start acting like decent unselfish human beings again datta dayatvam damyata shanti 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 On that note of optimism and hope let's wind up today's session we'll meet again with yet another modernist poetry by T S Eliot titled The Journey of the Magi Thank you.